Hello everyone and welcome back to part three of the absolutely massive art haul video. Today we're going to be swatching the remaining paints which are the Winder & Newton gouache paints um, and we're also going to be swatching the pencils. I have Derwent Light Fast. I thought they will be a nice addition to the coloured pencils I already own and I'm hoping I'm going to love them because I do love the Derwent drawing pencils and I've heard good things about the Derwent Light Fast. I've also got some of my favourite luminance. This is kind of like restocked pencils for me. Um, I just thought I'd show you some of my most used colours and a new one that I've discovered. Um, one of my favourite Polychromos um, colours and also I'm going to be swatching for the first time the Holbein Artists coloured pencil. I have six of those that I bought open stock and also one other thing, the Faber-Castell Caput Mortem Pit Artist brush pen. So you may notice that all of these have a sticky barcode label on the end of the pencil here. Um, I'm going to try and get them off and see how easy they are. I started to peel this one earlier and it looked promising because I know that this really bugs so many different artists um, when they will insist on putting sticky labels on pencils and you can't sharpen them properly and sometimes they're a nightmare to get off and they leave like a sticky residue. This one has peeled off perfectly and there's no sticky residue on there. I'm going to start with Midnight Black. What a brilliant name. Um, how shall I swatch these? We'll start, I think we'll just do it like this. I'm going to do it really firmly and gradually get lighter, less pressure, so we can see the full range of them. And there we go. They feel amazing, by the way. They feel very similar to the Derwent drawing pencils. So that kind of real um, creamy, waxy type of feel. I like the feel of them already, and I really like the look of them as well. They kind of look a little bit, a little bit like a luminance. Okay, so that one was Midnight Black. I'm going to write the names underneath so that um, we don't forget and if you see any you particularly like you can make a note of them yeah I thought midnight black seems to be I don't know if that's showing up on camera but it's I would say a very very slightly bluish black um, so it's not like a flat black. Is that the right way of describing it? I don't know. But um, yeah, I chose that because I thought it sounded interesting. I was really attracted to the name as much as anything else. Okay, so this is dark indigo and I tend to have a dark indigo pencil, I think, in pretty much all of the different pencils I have, all of the different brands. By the way, this paper I'm swatching on was um, actually from Choosing Keeping. It was their Aquarella watercolour paper, but I really like it for drawing. It has a very slight texture, um, but it's not as textured as cold press watercolour paper, and it's not as smooth as hot press. So it's kind of nice for pencils because you do get an interesting texture going on. So there's the dark indigo, hopefully you can see. We're doing this completely by natural light at the moment because it's sunny outside, but <laughs> if it gets darker, the sun has just gone behind a cloud, I might have to put the light on. Um, so you may notice a change in lighting in this video. I prefer to do things by natural light if possible, but here in the UK, especially this time of year, it's not always possible. Um, right, this one's called Nightshade, which is another fantastic name. And I believe, yep, yeah, this is a sort of purplish black. I think they described this one as being really good for like, I think it was this one, for outlines. If you wanted to do a darker outline on something. Um, that is a really beautiful colour. 
I'm not sure how different these are going to seem to you, but I will hold them up so you can get a closer look. But I can assure you that in person, in reality, they actually do look quite different to each other. Okay, next one along is Ocean Blue Dark in brackets. Now this is reminding me of something. I wonder if it's reminding me of one of the Derwent drawing pencils. It's that kind of lovely soft muted colour that they have. And I have to say, these do feel very similar to me when I'm using them, which I like because I really love the Derwent um, drawing pencils. Yeah, and I was going to say another thing I love about um, Derwent pencils being in the UK, that these are made in Britain. So I know that um, I'm supporting a British business, which is nice to know. I believe they're made in a factory in the Lake District. I might be wrong, but I think so. Um, which is an amazingly beautiful area. And I've only ever visited it very quickly once and I would love to go back. Okay, so this one is called Denim. So Ocean Blue, I would say, let's just have a look at that in a better light. Ocean blue is, I think that looks slightly greenish. It's a slightly greenish blue, but it is very dark. And the denim, I think, is actually reminding me slightly of the Prussian blue, I think, in the Luminance pencils. Yeah, that's a really good, solid, dark blue. Loving it. In my world, you can never have too many dark blues. Or Payne's Greys, apparently. Um, <laughs> this, I would say, is going to be a really good night landscape colour. I'm battling with the light here. I thought it would be a good day to film this, but it's changeable. Okay, so this one is the beautifully named Spruce Green. And yeah, it's lovely, kind of sort of greyish. Looks like a kind of greyish green. Yeah, perfect pine forest green here. It's very aptly named. They've all been really smooth and creamy so far. We haven't had a scratchy one, which is good. Occasionally in the luminance um, range you do get the odd scratchy pencil. They're rare. I mean, I think I only have a couple and I have like, I don't know, somewhere around 50 colours, 50 different colours, maybe more than that. So yeah, these have all been really creamy, waxy, beautiful, very pigmented. Okay, I'm going to have something totally different now. This is a really pale one. It's called Light Aqua. And I don't know why, but I was just so attracted to this colour. I thought it's unlike anything I really own at the moment, I think. Certainly when it comes to pencils. I think I have a paint this colour, but... I don't have pencils this colour. I thought that provides a really nice contrast. I love dark moody colours with um, with like a little pop of bright colour or pastel colour. I'm going to hold that up. Hopefully you can see that. Really gorgeous pastel shade. Let's just pop that down. Right, light aqua. And then moving on to purple. Now, I'm not a huge purple person, but I'm really getting into certain shades of purple at the moment. And this one was not what you think of as your traditional purple. You can see that it's, it's sort of like this grape kind of colour. Actually, funnily enough, I have one called grape from Holbein, so we'll have to compare the two. I mean, I often think of purple as being like a really vibrant colour. Um, but this is actually very muted. Look at those lovely colours. This is a really nice palette. Um, 
I think, you know something, if you go, I've discovered, I don't know whether this always works, but if you go for colours that you're really initially attracted to and you stick to just ordering the colours that really speak to you, that you get excited about and you love, they seem to always work together as a palette without you kind of consciously thinking, you know, I need to build... Um, a palette where everything is going to work together it's sort of like an instinctive thing it's certainly anyway this has kind of worked for me with paints or with pencils okay and the next one mars violet now i have um the derwent drawing pencil in mars violet so i had to get this one because honestly it is one of my favorite colors you can get some beautiful texture with them It would be hard to draw really finely um, on this paper, by the way, because it is slightly textured. So I haven't bothered really sharpening the pencils they are as they um, came. So there's Mars Violet working beautifully with that purple. It almost looks like it's just a slightly lighter shade of that. That, um, yeah, that's a firm favor of mine, Mars Violet good for autumn landscapes when you need like a heathery kind of colour as well as many other things okay the next one is going to be Mars Orange I love that because it's got this kind of um, earthy quality to it it's not like a super vibrant orange kind of rusty earth Okay, we have three more of the light fast pencils. This one is Salmon. This is a very pale pink, very soft colour. But again, it's that kind of muted, almost vintage type of pink. Do you know, I would say this one is slightly scratchier than the others. I can just feel that very, very slightly. But oh my goodness. Look at that, especially for my current favoured colour palette, which is like really dark um, blues and Payne's grey and um, sort of peaches and pinks and so on and corals. That is going to be perfect that kind of palette and the next one has a beautiful name as well I'm really loving how they've named these it's fossil grey and this definitely has a um, sort of violet tone to it it's a very warm grey actually I would say this one feels slightly scratchy as well very very slightly it's not um, it's not enough that it would hinder you that it would be really annoying but they just feel slightly scratchier whereas the other ones are slightly creamier looks beautiful with the salmon and finally this one is a very pale grey called mist so it's much more of a cool grey that's really a lovely muted palette with a couple of slightly more pastely colours in there they will be really nice additions to um, all of my luminance and polychromos and my Derwent drawing pencils. Right, I'm just going to go, now we've swatched all of those, and have a look at the Derwent drawing tin. I'm going to bring it over and we'll just see whether there are any that are similar to the ones I have in there. So here's the Derwent drawing tin that I got at Christmas. This was a Christmas present to myself. <laughs> Naturally, it'd be art materials. <laughs> right, so have we got, yes, we do have a Mars orange in the Derwent drawing. I'm gonna just see, should we see whether it's the same Mars orange? I'm just gonna do a little swatch beside. Ah, this is interesting. The Derwent drawing are softer than the light fast. The Derwent drawing feel much, actually do feel much more waxy. 
And I would say, I don't know whether you can see that fully on the camera, but I would say there's a very, very slight difference in colour. Maybe it looks slightly more brown, the Mars orange of the Derwent drawing. And they do a Mars violet, so let's, we swatch that down there and see if there's a difference. I'm gonna have to just sort of squeeze it in a bit here. Yeah, they do feel very slightly different, these pencils. I would say you're probably likely to be able to get a finer point on the light fast than you are the um, drawing pencils. And again, yeah, it's a very, I mean, it's pretty close. I think probably most people wouldn't be able to tell a difference, but I would say they look very, very slightly browner to me but it's minimal. So what do we have? We have a cool grey. Let's see how similar that is to mist. Sorry, we're going off track a bit here, but I thought it might be quite interesting to, to just see. Because it quite, could be quite helpful to you, I guess. So no, actually, no, the mist and the cool grey are quite different. The cool grey is actually I would say much more, it's darker and it's a little bit more yellowish, brownish kind of undertone. I mean, there's Solway Blue, but I think that's going to be, it's maybe a bit closer to mist perhaps, but no, it's more blue. It is definitely more blue. These colours are just so beautiful and I love the softness of them. I mean, for years, I don't think I really used coloured pencils because I kind of thought of them as being, now coloured pencil artists don't get annoyed with me here because this is just my opinion and I was completely wrong, so I'm admitting I was wrong. But I kind of thought of them as being a bit garish and just in kind of bright shades and a bit like something you would use when you were at school. And so I didn't think of them as being even though there are some fantastic coloured pencil artists out there, I didn't think of them as being something that I could use and um, I thought they wouldn't have my colour palette. And then I discovered Luminance back in the summer of last year and the soft colours and the muted colours. And I was like, it completely changed my entire opinion of coloured pencils. And so I bought a few and I loved them so much. I just kept adding and adding to my collection. And, um, and then people keep telling me, oh, you should try the Holbein Artist's colour pencils and you should try the Derwent Lightfast and the Derwent Drawing Pencils. I'm kind of gradually adding different brands to my collection. Um, the other ones I love to use are some of the uh, Faber-Castell Polychromos. I've had those for quite a while, actually. I bought some of those, I think it was back in either 2017 or 18 used them a tiny bit but then didn't really use them any more because I just thought I'm not really a pencil artist <laughs> but actually it turns out I am a pencil artist so there we go um anyway I think that will do for the comparisons I just wanted to see whether some of these looked kind of similar and um, yeah, we do have a Mars violet and we have a Mars orange I would say the Derwent drawing pencil version very, very slightly darker, but there's hardly anything in it. Um, and yeah, mist is quite different to the the greys that you would find in um, the drawing pencils. So let's get on to the, I think we'll do the Holbein Artist Colour Pencil next. Okay, the lighting has changed again. I've put an extra light on because it's getting darker and darker. It looks like a storm is coming outside. So we've gone from bright sunshine to slightly cloudy, to incredibly dark and potentially stormy. <laughs> so we have an extra light, I hope you can see okay. Um, right, here are the six Holbein Artist pencils. I decided to get, um, I just chose colours again that really appealed to me. So let's have a little swatch of them and see how they look. I think I'm kind of tempted to start with the lighter one this time. Okay, let's swatch Smoke Blue. Has a great name. Ooh. Oh wow, this does feel good. <laughs> I was told that these were nice pencils. Someone, I forget who it was, said to me that they were their favorite colored pencil. 
I made quite a bit of, um, I mean, there's quite a lot of like little, I don't know, I always call them little dusty bits, but they probably have a proper name coming off. But that, that is a stunning colour and it's actually um, darker than I was expecting it to be because it actually looks quite a pale pencil. But that is a very lavender kind of blue, I would say. And that also looks really nice with those. Right, the next one, let's go for another blue. Now this is something at the opposite end of the scale. This is indigo. So not dark indigo this time, but just indigo. And yeah, that's an interesting colour, this indigo. It is much paler and it's much more purpley um, and bluish than the dark indigo here. It's really nice. Yeah, I like these pencils. I really want to get the soft white in, um, in this brand because Somebody said to me it's the most opaque white coloured pencil that they've come across and um, Jackson's have been out of stock for I think at least two months now. I keep checking but it's not back in stock yet. Okay this one is called Grape. I think it probably is going to be, oh, because I did say I think it might be maybe similar to the purple of the Derwent Light Fast but interestingly it is actually it's much closer to the nightshade. Look at that, there's hardly any difference between the grape of this one and the nightshade, which is good because I really love that colour. <laughs> and I was already thinking that nightshade is going to be one I use quite a bit, so it's good that I have this pencil. They are incredibly similar. Um, right, fur green. Is this going to look like spruce green? We will see. And the answer is not really. <laughs> the fur green is, I would say, much more similar to perhaps the pine green. I'm just going by memory, but maybe the pine green um, Faber-Castell Polychromos. This is a much more of a greyish green, this spruce green. So I'm glad I have this because this is a very Natasha Newton green. And this is a lovely one too. Okay, so we have just two more of these. I bought a yellow ochre because I don't think I really have a yellow ochre. Oh, maybe I do in the Derwent drawing pencils. Something perhaps that's similar. But I thought this looked like a really lovely colour. With yellows, I would say that I tend to go for... Um, I will go for something creamy and pale like a Naples yellow or I like to go for a yellow ochre. I don't really do lemon yellows in my work. A gorgeous colour for an autumn landscape. Could be quite useful for perhaps coastal as well. You think of like beaches and cliffs and so on. Anyway, that's really nice. Okay, and the last one is a stunning coral. And I wonder how close it is to my new favourite um, luminance, or one of my favourites anyway. I don't really have an absolute favourite. Now I've got to try and pronounce this again. Is it anthraquinoid pink or is it anthraquinoid pink? Let me know in the comments below. I wonder how similar it is to that. Anyway, let's just swatch it and see. Oh, wow. <laughs> Now this is a wow. Oh gosh, that is a gorgeous colour. Okay, I really, really, really love this colour. Look at how bright and vibrant. Mix that with some greys and dark blues. It's gonna look absolutely stunning. Oh, I'm so glad I got that one. Okay, let's see. It does look quite similar to um, the anthraquinoid, anthraquinoid pink. <laughs> I'm going to swatch, I tell you what, I need to write, don't I, luminance. Let's just, what we'll do is we will just write luminance here. Oh, I haven't written the brand. We know luminance Karen Dash, don't we? We're not going to worry about it. So we'll just do a little arrow and we'll quickly swatch the four 
luminance pencils that I have here. So let's do this one first to see how similar it is. Gosh, I love this colour. I love it. And it's so smooth. It goes on so beautifully. No, it's actually darker, isn't it? It's quite a bit darker. Isn't it funny how you remember colours and then um, when you actually compare them, you see that they're quite different to your sort of memory of them. Does that make sense? Makes sense in my head. That is an absolutely luscious colour. See, I always thought this one was quite coral, but now I look at it compared to the whole wine coral, and it actually just looks like gorgeous. Um, it's quite a bit darker, isn't it? than the coral looking at it but yeah it's just a gorgeous bright pink oh look at that palette is that not looking good yeah this was the pencil where I stocked up on I think I have six of them because they've discontinued um, the pigment that is in this pencil um, Karen Dash haven't discontinued it the chemical companies who make the pigments have discontinued it and for what reason we don't know but um, I'm a little bit worried that this is not going to be available for very much longer I mean maybe they have an absolute ton of this pigment in stock and they'll keep making this for years I have no idea but I did order several of these pencils because I know I'm going to be using it a lot and I'm really sad that they've discontinued the pigment anyway on to different things um, right, this is the Dark Indigo Luminance. This was a restock pencil because this is one of my most used pencils um, of Luminance. And I will show you why. Because you can get this amazing dark, looks almost black, but it has a hint of blue to it which possibly doesn't come across on camera. Do you know, one thing I will say is that the light fast pencils at the top here didn't create as many little dusty bits as the Holbein Artists and the Luminance. They're both, look, do you see all these little, little bits? Which I'm gonna have to blow away, there we go. Right, this is very similar I would say to the Midnight Black of the Derwent Light Fast, except it has more of a bluish tinge to it. But they are quite similar. But yeah, it's really interesting. You can go over a layer of dark indigo with like either, I think the white pencil or, this works really well with the pink white for some reason, the pink white luminance. If you go over the top, it seems to bring out this gorgeous, almost electric blue kind of color from the dark indigo. So try layering it because you'll find some interesting effects and interesting colors happening. And aside from their Payne's Gray, which I already have quite a few, so I didn't need to restock, I really love Payne's Gray 60% and Payne's Gray 30%. So these are extras because I didn't want to run out or be in any danger of running out. So this, as you can see, can get a really lovely dark um, finish with this. We can just go lighter. It gets into a slightly paler grey. Where am I going to swatch the Payne's Grey 30%? I didn't think this through, did I? I might have to do it just up the side here. <laughs> These are just for my reference. Anyway, this will go into my swatching folder. Payne's Grey 60% is one of my new most used pencils of the Luminance range. Um, I didn't used to use it as much as the Payne's Grey, but um, I'm liking the fact that it's a little bit lighter and you can really see the blue in it. Because Payne's Grey is gorgeous, but it can be very heavy. And this one's just a little bit lighter. Okay, we're going to do this one at the side here. So this is Payne's Grey 30%, which is just the most perfect 
shade of um, bluish grey. You can see the difference between the two. And so I would say um, smoke blue is much more of a lavender kind of, it's almost got this like violety tone to it, whereas this is just a very cool bluish grey. Now the other pencil I wanted to show you, this, this is a restock as well because I'm using this quite a bit at the moment, is the Kaput Mortem Violet from Faber-Castell Polychromos. And now if I just swatch this here and make a little note, um, or should I put it here, maybe? I have to say the Faber-Castell pencils do feel amazing. I feel like you can get a finer point on them. I don't know whether any of you feel this. They sort of seem to need less sharpening, I guess, because they have like a harder point. They're really nice to use. I mean, all of these pencils I love. So there you go, it's Kaput Mortem, but just slightly more. You can just see a slight hint of violet to it. But very versatile um, colour. And the only other thing I wanted to swatch on this page was the Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen in Kaput Mortem. So I will just do a little swatch of that there. And you can see, actually, I know this is a pen and the other one is a pencil, but you can see... Um, hopefully that comes through on camera, that that one is much more brown. When you compare it to that one, this one really has a violet tinge to it. So there we go. That is all of the pencil swatches. And I think that looks like a really gorgeous palette, even though, again, I didn't get these to make a palette <laughs> in kind of like its own right. These were just additions to my already existing pencil collection, but it works. And I think it works because I just went with my gut and chose the colors I loved. And they somehow seem to work together, which is very interesting. I decided to speed up the footage of when I was swatching the Winsor & Newton Designer's Gouache Paint. Uh, because I just had nine tubes of that. These were additions to the gouache I already have. So I looked at my collection and I decided the kind of colours that were missing and that I really needed, I think, in my palette. So yeah, this is not the neatest swatching I've ever done. It's a bit haphazard. Um, when I filmed this, it was getting late and it was dark outside. I was getting tired and I just wanted to to give them um, a bit of a swatch and just see what they look like, just get kind of a general idea. And um, I love the vibrancy of the colours. I think they look really fantastic. And I noticed when I watered them down a little bit, um, they weren't quite so opaque. They're actually, some of them were fairly translucent if I really watered them down, which was nice. The Viridian was really difficult actually. When I was putting it on, it seemed streaky, but I love how it dried. So um, that was a surprising one. I love Winsor Newton gouache. I think it's really great quality. I've used it for absolutely years and I really wanted to get back into using regular gouache again. I've been using acrylic gouache a lot in the last few years and I thought it would be nice to get back into this alongside the watercolour painting. I decided to take a few minutes just to play around with the paint I'd squeezed out of the tubes and see if I could mix some of the brighter colours with zinc white to make um, some lovely softer pastel shades and I was really pleased with um, the colours I could create, especially the perylene maroon and zinc white. It actually makes um, what looks to me like a potter's pink. So I'm really pleased with that. And uh, yeah, I like the soft blues and greens and so on. And I also mixed up um, ultramarine and burnt sienna and that created a really lovely bluish grey. 
And lastly, I promised you that I would show you um, the Etcher sketchbooks. Um, I'm just showing you the smaller one here. This is A6 size, but I also bought an A5. Um, these came from Jackson's. By the way, I have a Jackson's link in the description beneath this video so please check that out but um, yeah I love these sketchbooks I'd never used them before but they were recommended to me and um, as you can see the quality is really high I really love the paper I wanted to test it out so I did some of my muted mixes um, using my new watercolour paints from the other video and uh, yeah the page didn't buckle the paper seems really good um, it's 100% cotton paper you can see it's just got a very slight texture to it which is just about the right kind of texture for me for watercolour paper it also has a little pocket in the back just like a moleskin sketchbook and um, I should have mentioned yes the cover is um, like a woven material a textured material they say you can actually paint on the cover if you want which would be quite interesting to really personalize your sketchbook anyway I will put a link to the sketchbooks in the description box beneath the video thank you all for watching I will be back soon with another video I don't know yet whether it will be making the paint palettes or whether we're going to be swatching and creating smart work with the new crema pigments greys palette um, but it will be one of those two so I'll see you again soon and take care everyone and thank you again for watching